Welcome to the AI Thunderdome, where tech giants are duking it out for supremacy in the world of artificial intelligence. This could be the grand prize in big tech, and it's the kind of drama that likely makes the writers of Silicon Valley want to come out of retirement and start a reboot. So buckle up, because we're about to dive headfirst into the exhilarating and terrifying world of ChatGPT4 and where the AI landscape sits today. A transition that's got everyone from basement dwelling developers to Silicon Valley moguls scrambling to stake their claim in this digital gold rush. Now, imagine if Siri and Alexa had a super smart love child that could not only tell you the weather, but also write your college thesis, design a website, and explain a meme to you involving a picture of a cat riding a unicycle at a mega rally. That's ChatGPT4, folks. And as this brainchild of big data takes over the world, the titans of big tech are engaging in a high stakes game of digital chess, where the winner gets to reshape the very fabric of our reality. Meanwhile, the rest of us are left gawking at the sheer speed of it all, wondering if our friendly AI overlords will usher in a utopian paradise or a dystopian hellscape. Because let's face it, folks, when the main players in this AI arms race are mega corporations whose primary concern is the bottom line, We've got to wonder, are we really in good hands? In March 2023, we saw how quickly things are going to start developing in the AI world. AI is going to move fast. Microsoft sent shockwaves through the tech world when they announced they'd be integrating ChatGPT into their search engine. And suddenly the tech world realized that Google's dominance over search could finally be at risk. And at the same time, OpenAI unveiled ChatGPT4. Well, there isn't a single metric that can fully capture the improvement of ChatGPT4 over ChatGPT 3.5. There are several ways to highlight the advancements. Here are a few notable areas of improvement. When talking about input and output size, ChatGPT4 can handle a larger input output size compared to its predecessor, allowing it to process more complex and longer text. More input. Okay, no ChatGPT4 is now multimodal, meaning it can understand both text and images. This is a significant improvement over ChatGPT3, which was primarily text-based. It's almost like ChatGPT went from being blind to being able to see. I can see. ChatGPT4 has shown improved logic and reasoning, showing better performance on various tests that measure logic and reasoning capabilities. If you want an idea of just how much it has improved, just look at the various test score improvements from 3.5 to 4, where ChatGPT went from the 40th percentile on the LSAT to the 88th, and from the 10th percentile on the bar exam to the 90th. The bar exam's a mother, I mean. For and when it comes to performance in professional tasks, according to an MIT paper, professionals using ChatGPT4 can complete tasks in half the time with improved output quality. This demonstrates the practical applications of GPT-4 in real life situations. Work smarter, not harder. Here are a couple of recent developments of applications. One guy took a website drawing on a napkin, handed it over to OpenAI and turned it into a functioning website. General Motors is now looking at having the chatbot power the virtual assistant in its cars. In March, we saw Midjourney gain major traction after an AI generated picture of the Pope went viral. By the end of the month, they had to remove free trial users because there was so much demand for Midjourney, which works by learning from existing artwork, resulting in impressive detail and realism in generated images. Just take a look at some of the images that it's generated. In a mind-blowing demonstration of AI's creative prowess, one enterprising individual managed to cook up a Jay-Z song using nothing but the power of artificial intelligence. By feeding a massive data set of Jay-Z lyrics into an AI algorithm, he was able to generate an eerily authentic sounding track that had Jay-Z's signature flow and lyrical style. The result, a toe-tapping tune that left fans wondering if Hava himself had a hand in its creation. Uh, yeah. You tell the young they can never become what they aspire to. Born in a cell with no one who can inspire you. Your highs are was never as high as those lie to you. Pretending that they live in the sky, lying behind your roof. Hey, if it's not Big Brother we need to worry about, it's Big Pimpin'. It makes you wonder if we're not that far off from seeing artists that are no longer with us today releasing new albums. Keep an eye out for the new AI-inspired Frank Sinatra album, Fly Me to the Server Room. All right, I'll stop making jokes. Let's talk about the AI wars. In February, as OpenAI was blowing up with Main Street, Google rushed to present their own chatbot named Bard, which produced a factual error in its first demo, and Google stock lost $100 billion in value the next day. Then, in March, 
Google CEO Sundar Puchai announced plans to incorporate large language models into Google Search. BARD, while currently separate from the search engine, is being tested for future integration. Here in Canada, I can't access it, but it's being rolled out in other markets. Alphabet, Google's parent company, is fueling the AI race by supplying their AI models to Replit, a web-based coding tool. This move sets Alphabet in direct competition with Microsoft and GitHub, who are using AI to assist coders with Copilot. And then also in March, Baidu, China's search engine giant, demoed their AI chatbot, ErnieBot, to investors in a closed door meeting, which didn't go so well. Baidu stock got crushed the next day. Ernie, designed to be used in search, the AI cloud, autonomous driving, and smart devices, already reportedly has 650 companies signed up to use it. But also, you know, the tech doesn't work, so like, okay. Apple has remained relatively tight-lipped about its AI ventures. As expected, they're said to be experimenting with AI technology to improve series capabilities and create more personalized experiences for their users. Now, Apple has adopted a unique approach, capitalizing on its advantageous position to potentially earn billions of dollars without even engaging in direct competition. With over one and a half billion users globally who generally are okay with spending money for services, they can sit back and work with the best providers and charge them for access. I want access. For example, they did it on search. Google pays Apple $15 billion per year to maintain its role as the default search engine on the multitude of iOS devices. Now, if Microsoft decides they're ready to get serious about search, they could simply offer a higher bid to secure the coveted default supremacy. Of course, we also got to touch on Facebook. Meta is said to be focusing on developing AI solutions to enhance the user experience across Meta's platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. As of right now, they aim to leverage AI technology to improve content recommendations, filter harmful content, and create more engaging and personalized experiences for users. Well, not exciting. Just like Apple, they do have platforms that can provide a framework to implement other AI technology for a price. This example is more akin to large shopping mall companies giving access to new brands and stores. Of course, shopping malls are dying and both Facebook and Apple are tech companies with vast amounts of money and data. I'm still sure that they're cooking up some big announcements as we speak. Amazon is exploring AI opportunities to enhance its web services and sales operations. Amazon Web Services expanded its partnership with AI startup Hugging Face to make its language generation tool available to cloud customers. This partnership allows AWS to enter the competitive arena alongside tech giants like Microsoft and Google, spawning large language models and competing commercially in the enterprise field. And if you think Amazon was done there, they just launched Bedrock, a new rival to ChatGPT. If there is one thing that is clear, it appears big tech will move these programs forward even if they aren't ready, which means that they either hope to start collecting data in hopes their machine learning will just figure it out, or optically, they just don't wanna look like their leadership has fallen behind. Also in March, Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak, and over 1,100 technologists and AI researchers have sounded the alarm by signing an open letter calling for a six-month pause on the development of advanced AI systems. They're urging tech companies to stop training AI systems more powerful than GPT-4 over concerns these systems could lead to job losses and unchecked deployment in the business world. They argue that more powerful AI systems should only be developed once we're sure their effects will be positive and their risks manageable. It's not as though I think that the risk is that the AI would develop a will of its own right off the bat. I think it's more that's, uh, the concern is that some someone um, may use it in a way that is bad, um, or, or and even if they weren't going to use it in a way that's bad, that somebody could take it from them and use it in a way that's bad. That that I think is quite a big danger. However, not everyone is on board with the idea of a moratorium. Some critics argue that putting a halt on AI development would stifle innovation and that the real dangers of AI are already happening and need to be addressed. As AI continues to advance, striking a balance between innovation and responsible development becomes increasingly important. Now, why would Elon be crying to stop the AI freight train? On the stop. Yo, stop it. Stop. It needs to be said that despite being a founder in OpenAI, Elon sold his shares to Microsoft years ago. So Elon asking to slow down OpenAI needs to be taken with a grain of salt, given he is working on building a competing AI chatbot himself. Of course, Microsoft founder Bill Gates feels differently, telling Reuters, I don't think asking one particular group to pause solves the challenges. Bill Gates, love him or hate him, knows more about the history of computing than almost anyone. He wrote a blog post recently where he said he has seen two revolutionary technological demonstrations in his lifetime. 
One, the graphical user interface in 1980, and two, OpenAI's artificial intelligence in 2022. Gates believes that the development of AI is as fundamental as the creation of the microprocessor, personal computer, internet, and mobile phone, and will change how people work, learn, travel, get healthcare, and communicate with each other. He also believes AI can help reduce some of the world's biggest inequities, particularly in health, education, and climate change. But, I mean, it's also Bill Gates. So let's take that one with a grain of salt also. Oh, I didn't get rich by writing a lot of checks. In the classic sci-fi movie Terminator, humanity faces a grim future, where self-aware machines turn against their creators in an epic battle for survival. Ah, the good old days, when our biggest fear was a robot with an Austrian accent and a fondness for leather jackets. But as we inch closer to the reality of AI domination, maybe it's time we dust off our VHS copies of Terminator and take a closer look at the cautionary tale of Skynet. You see, the moral of the story isn't just about killer robots from the future. It's about humanity's reckless pursuit of technology without considering the consequences. The parallels are uncanny, and we might just be setting ourselves up for a sequel. Even OpenAI's founder himself has been calling for more AI regulation on Twitter. Which is like Dr. Frankenstein tweeting, Hey guys, maybe we should slow down on this whole monster thing. But in all seriousness, the AI revolution is upon us and it's no laughing matter. And we've got lots of money up for grabs for whoever can conquer it. This could be the ultimate prize in tech. The risks are real, but the people we hear about in the media crying for regulation are likely posturing for their own positioning. It's like a race to the top of the AI mountain, and everyone wants to plant their flag before the avalanche comes crashing down. So let's heed the warning from the Terminator and remember that it's not about stopping progress, but about understanding and managing the risks. Because if we're not careful, the only thing standing between us and an AI apocalypse might just be a time-traveling bodybuilder with a penchant for one-liners. Hasta la vista, baby.